Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. In this video, I'm going to take you guys out on the boat with me and show you how I film my fishing trips so you can do the same thing at home. Now folks, when I started out, I had a single GoPro camera, one of the old original hero cameras. I think it was even 720. Uh, it wasn't even 1080. And all I was doing was just shooting some of the fishing trips, cutting it down in some free online software, and posting it to YouTube. Didn't have a YouTube channel like I do now, but we just saw YouTube as a place to host a video so that you could link it somewhere else so people could watch it. Uh, obviously, things have progressed a lot uh, over the past 10 years or so since I started doing that. And uh, what I'm going to do is take you out on the boat with me and uh, show you kind of what I do now. Uh, it's obviously a little bit more complicated, but it should give you some ideas of what the potential is for you. All right, guys, going to give you a little breakdown on how I film my fishing videos while I'm out on the boat. I get a lot of requests and a lot of people asking about, uh, you know, shooting, filming stuff on a boat. Not necessarily for a YouTube channel, but you just may want to record it for your family or something just to have some memories. Uh, one of the best cameras used is a GoPro. It's what I use. Uh, I've got three of them on the boat. You don't need three of them to do this. You can get by with one. Uh, but I use the GoPro. I've got a four. Uh, the picture you're seeing right there is recorded on a Hero 4. These are 7s. Uh, I've got one on a chesty cam, which is like uh, I wear around my chest. That's that POV of me reeling a fish in. Uh, that's a great angle. You can also put it on your hat. I'm not a big fan of having the little thing on here because it weighs down the brim of your hat. The other thing is you lean over in the water, your hat falls off, your camera sinks. It's not a good thing. So. I like the chesty cam, it's nice and secure. They got a head strap, and then you got that head thing around your head. It's just not comfy, so. But go with what works for you. They got a lot of mounting options is the biggest thing. This here, uh, one of my favorites, it's a uh, spring clip. Uh, it's actually made by GoPro. It's got a gooseneck on it that bends. You can clamp it anywhere on the boat. Uh, the other cool thing about this one is, is this actually comes off. So you're left with just this part. And it's got their universal little uh, slide on clip thing that I can put it on my motor or I can put it on my console. So it makes it very easy to use, very easy to move around. Also, the top piece comes off if you don't want to use the gooseneck. Again, same thing. It's got this uh, locking little mechanism they got on it. Makes it very convenient for putting these cameras where you want. Now, one of the cool things about the GoPro is, as I nearly drop it in the lake, is it's got a touch screen on the back. Uh, these newer models do anyway. This one here that you're seeing me on does not. It's a Hero 4, it does not have a screen on the back. The newer ones do, check the models. Uh, this has a, uh, like I said, a screen. You can see what's going on uh, and that helps a lot. It's not like having a DSLR or a bigger camera, but it's waterproof. Uh, and the cooler thing with the newer ones is they have image stabilization built in. And what that means is when you're walking around and you're moving, it will use some uh, computer algorithms to kind of balance uh, your shot. So it's not all shaky and jerky. This camera here does not have that. These cameras do have that. So that's a big plus in using these cameras. Uh, the other thing they've got is uh, it's a multi-directional audio deal so that it tries to eliminate wind noise. Now I put some little wind muffs on my camera here, some little pieces, it's actually a piece of terry cloth that is glued on there. But it's got three different places that these newer cameras uh, are actually recording audio from. So that helps with your audio. There's nothing worse than hearing that wind noise. It makes the video unwatchable. So uh, one of the cool things about the camera. Now another thing I would suggest, because I've heard people doing this is I would suggest that you start and stop your rolls. And what I mean by that is don't put the camera somewhere, turn it on recording and just let it roll because you will have hours and hours of nothing. What I suggest you do, uh, especially with these GoPro cameras, you can hit the button and it will start recording right away without having to turn it on and get it fired up and all that stuff. And most of the time with your cell phones, you've got a quick uh, record button on there that you can hit that'll get it going. So what I say to do is to... Do a little selective shooting whenever you're filming your trips. I 
The other thing is these newer ones have a lot of features that are nice. You can do a night time lapse so you can get some really cool night video. It does actually a, a long exposure, a time exposure at night. Uh, you can do a hyperlapse. Uh, uh, basically it's a time lapse, but it's at a different increment. Uh, and those are some real cool shots. It gives you a lot of creative options if you're trying to raise your game a little bit and what you're doing with some of your videos while you're out fishing. Again, you don't need to utilize all that. One camera with a half decent mount and you can shoot about anything you want out here. The other cool thing is it's easy to ingest the video. Uh, you can bring it into any of the free editing software like uh, Movie Maker or iMovie. If you're on a Mac, that's what I started out editing on. Uh, comes a little mini, mini SD card and you can shoot a lot a lot of footage on one of these cards Like I said, I've got three of them I end up getting back with a lot of footage. It's a it's it's a wrangling You don't need to be doing that in the beginning start out with a little bit shoot the shots You need cut it together however you want to do it uh, and it's a great way to uh, Just save some memories for your family Another thing I suggest to do is to use some of these brackets, uh, use some of these devices that lock this camera off. The more steady you can keep your footage, the better off you will be in the end. The easier it will be to watch. Uh, having stuff that moves around a lot and shakes and is all over the place is very distracting to the viewer and uh, it can kind of make it not interesting to watch and you kind of want to go do something else. So try to keep that camera still as possible. Obviously you have to move some. Some of the GoPros, especially the newer ones with Im image stabilization definitely helps. But uh, yeah, if you've got one of these brackets to lock it off on, it will make it a lot more interesting for folks to watch. Again, like I said with this camera, one of the cool things about this one is I can put it in several different places on the boat. What I'm gonna do is here show you, I've got some of these little mounts. They make these little uh, sticky mounts that you can put in different places on the boat. And I've got them in a couple places. And what I do is I will put one right here on my console. I'll keep that where y'all can see it. I can get that camera rolling and I can point it anywhere on the boat. It's a great way to see what's going on back here. If I'm over here catching a fish, I can have it pointed in this direction and see what's going on. Or if I am, sorry about that noise, sitting down here talking, uh, you wanna talk with your kids, you wanna talk with your wife, you wanna talk with a friend, it's a great place to have it. it gives you a good, uh, just locked off shot of what's going on. Now another place I use the same gooseneck and it's a great place when you're finding fish out the back of the boat and that is here on the motor. The motor setup is one of my favorite places to put this mount. Put it right on there and it's shooting right back at you. So if you're sitting here fighting a fish, got something going on, the camera can see you from that direction. So uh, it's a great place to put it. And again, with these sticky mounts like this, you can take these on and off of here very easily and get them on and off of the boat. Uh, in the different place. Now, the will, one thing I will say is, folks, always hold on to it by the gooseneck, loosen it up, slide it off. Always keep a hand on it, because these things sink. Unless you put the flotation stuff on them, they will sink. Like I was saying, the image stabilization on this thing is very nice. I'm walking around the boat here with this thing, and it does have an algorithm in there that makes some adjustments to balance it. It's almost like having a gimbal or a gyro on the camera, and it really helps uh, keep your footage stable, a lot more watchable than something that's all kinds of herky-jerky. Now, let me say this, folks. I use GoPro cameras in what I'm shooting uh, because they're very convenient and they work out really well for what I'm doing with all the different attachments and all the technology that is put into these little bitty cameras. They work great for what I'm doing, but don't feel like you have to have one. You can record this stuff on your smartphone. Uh, it's a very good camera that are in all the smartphones now and uh, you can do just fine with that. As a matter of fact, what I suggest people do is you've got an old one. The camera still works in it. Even though you may not have cell service on it, the camera still works. Take it. That way you don't have to worry about dropping it in the lake. Uh, or you can use that as a second camera. So don't forget your smartphone is a very good camera for you to use out there filming on the boat. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.